Hey everybody, how's it going? Jonathan here with Automate with Jonathan. In this video, I'm going to show you how to accept the cookie consent with Selenium Python. Uh, so here's the, a web page with a, a cookie consent request at the bottom. And in some cases, you may have to accept this before you can proceed to the website. But this is just Corbin.com. And then and you click accept and that goes away. So I'm going to show you how to click that button automatically. So we're going to go back over to our code. And the very first thing we're going to do is start working on our imports. So obviously, import web driver. Okay. And then that's a very basic, you know, Selenium library that everybody's got to run from selenium.webdriver.com and dot buy import buy this library is going to allow us to uh, to drill down to this specific element on the web page by using this module buy mm. we may need to uh, install some options like if we wanted to run headless in the future this might not be a hundred percent required but it's always good to have it I always use options uh, on all of my uh, on all my programs just just in case in the future it's from selenium.webdriver.chrome.service import service. This is so that we can instantiate the driver and set the path of the driver location. From selenium.webdriver.common.keys import keys. This is in case we need to uh, do any typing or send any keys, do any scrolling, something like that. So these are four or five rather modules that I recommend installing for this. So first thing we do is we're going to set the location of our Chrome driver. This is uh, just good housekeeping. So slash Chrome driver, this is where we've downloaded and installed our Chrome driver in the past. A little typo there. Isn't that great? I love PyCharm. Can you see how that uh, opens up? It's it's actually exploring the Finder folder right now and telling us, you know, that's where it is. Fantastic. Uh, we're gonna set our Chrome options. We're going to set the headless uh, option to be equal to false because we want to display the window we want to display the chrome browser actually executing this if i set that to true it would just run the background but i'm going to set it to false and now we're actually going to create our web driver service equals s which corresponds to here and options equals chrome options There you go. Now, we have everything set up to create our, our Chrome driver now. So driver.get, and this is going to be our target page. This is where we're going to be clicking the accept button, for, or the consent button, rather, for cookies. So here, corbin.com, we go to it, you can see this. Boom, boom, boom. I usually, well, we don't need to run that this time. And now we're, what we're going to do, hmm, we're going to say consent underscore button equals driver dot find underscore element. And we're going to do equals by by 
dot uppercase by dot. I, I think it could be class name, but I don't know yet. See, when we use this by library, we can do it by tag name, we can do it by name, we can do it by class name, CSS selector, partial link text, or link text, or ID. I mean, obviously, if we used link text with accept, it would work. It might just not be the best way to do it. I'd rather do it by something that has a one-to-one -one relationship with this accept button. Because if we did it by link text or we did it by partial link text, there may be another accept uh, link somewhere. So let's see. On click accept cookie class equals Appify RC. Yeah, maybe we can just we'll try class name. I've not done this yet, so I'm kind of learning here with you. So we'll do. We've got that. We just copied that class name by class name. And then, how do we set the class name? Oh yeah, you know what we do? We do this, comma, value equals, and then we paste in our class name. Where do we get that? Remember, see right here. The button class name is appify underscore rcc underscore button. So there you have it. So this will, will load that element into consent button and then we just run consent underscore button dot click and then we say a prayer and hope that works otherwise I'll have to remake this video I'm already seven minutes in so let's run it let's see how it goes okay it's run it's opened up the Corvo website oh and it clicked it do you see that it went away right there let's run that again Let's, uh, let's put a sleep in there so we can watch it. That's sometimes something I do here. But you know what? If we're going to add a sleep, we're going to import time. And then, oh shoot, excuse me, pressing too many buttons. And then we're going to do time.sleep, and then we'll enter seconds of value, so it'll be three seconds. And let's rerun that. Okay, it's loaded the page. It's not clicked, it's that probably one more second and click. And then there you go. Great, that's one way to, uh, to, an, to accept a consent for cookies using Chrome and Selenium. Uh, let's, let me go back through. Let me do another high level overview in case you missed something because I don't wanna, I don't wanna leave you high and dry here. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm going to leave some contact info and this code as well in the description. So don't feel free, totally feel free to send me an email and ask me questions. I will respond. Um, so we have these. See, look, we didn't even use keys. We didn't have to. I imported that for no reason. So keys in this in this specific scenario wasn't needed. Service options, uh, buy, web driver, and time. We've used all of, all those five. So we set the location of our Chrome driver, which is a basic Chrome uh, Selenium operation. We've created our options. We've set headless to equal to false so that we actually see the, uh, the browser run. We, did our, we created our driver, driver.chrome, or web driver, excuse me, dot Chrome, passed in our services, our S, and our options. And then we got the page in question, the one we want to click the accept on. And then we created this variable and loaded this element into this variable, and then we clicked on it. Super simple. You can you can wind that up however you want. You know you can put it in a loop. You can change this to elements, and it will return an array of of items that have that class name. Tons of different things you could do with Selenium. But that's kind of the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, this code's in the in the description and uh, my contact info is in the description too. In case you have any questions, 100%, feel free to send me an email. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.